This is the first lesson of your exponential and logarithmic functions unit for Algebra 2. And the first lesson is over a properties of exponents review. So um, hopefully you've already seen these in Algebra 1, um, but let's go over them. So the zero exponent property is a property that, st that states that anything that's raised to the power of zero is one and a cannot be one. So any number, whether that's, you know, 500 or variable, whether it's x, you know, x, y raised to the power, all raised to the power of zero, that's going to be one. Now here's one thing that you need to keep in mind. Zero raised to the power of x is zero, right? So if your base is zero, your base raised to any value is going to be zero. And then any number raised to the power of zero is one. So keep that in mind. A lot of students get that mixed up and they wanna say that any number raised to the power of zero is zero. That is not the case. Any number raised to the power of zero is one. The negative exponent property states that any value that is raised to a negative exponent, you're going to take the reciprocal of it. So that it doesn't yield a negative value, it take the reciprocal of it, put one over it, and that's one over x to the power of the positive exponent. So if we look at this first example here, six raised to the power of negative two, is actually one over six squared, right? So I take the reciprocal of it, which means I flip six over one to be one over six, and I take the positive exponent. So what, that's actually one thirty-sixth. So whereas some students wanna say, oh, it's negative 36, nope, it's not. It is a very, very small number. It's one over 36. And then if we look at a more detailed example, when I have a bunch of variables raised to exponents like this, everything that has a negative exponent that's in the numerator, I'm gonna move it to the denominator and make it positive. If it's in the denominator, I'm gonna move it to the numerator and make it positive. So what I'm gonna do is just rewrite negative three over five, and then I'm going to take all of those variables with negative exponents and I'm gonna move them to the denominator. So a to the power of negative one, I'm gonna move down here. And then I don't need a ne a, an exponent of one, it's just assumed one. If you wanna write that, you can. Then c to the power of four, I'm gonna leave b squared in the numerator because it's positive. Now let's go to the denominator. This x to the power of negative seven, I'm gonna move it to the numerator and make it x to the power of seven and I'm gonna leave y cubed in the denominator because it's positive it's going to stay down there so let's move on to the next property the product of powers property you also might see it as the product property you might see it as the product rule right it's a property it's a rule but basically it states that when you multiply two powers with the same base so a to the power of m times a to the power of n so i'm multiplying same base what can I do to simplify this? I can add the exponents. So in this first example, x to the power of five times x to the power of seven, I'm multiplying, I've got the same base. What can I do? That's x to the power of seven plus five, which is 12. I can do the same thing if I have a number that's a base, right? I've got the same base, so that's gonna be three to the power of five, which I know if I wanted to do three times three times three times three times three, or use my calculator, I would get 243. Let's move on to the next property. It's called the power of a power property, or the power property, or the power rule. That might be how you've seen this. So when you're gonna use this property, you're gonna see an exponent right outside the parentheses. Okay, so you're gonna use this power property or power of a power property. What that means is that if I have a variable or a number raised to an exponent, all raised to, like outside the parentheses, I have another exponent, I can multiply those exponents. So if we look at this first example, we see that we have an exponent right outside the parentheses. I can use that power rule or power of a power property to get rid of the exponents. What can I do? I can multiply, right? I'm gonna get, y to the power of four times five, which is y to the power of 20. When I look at the next example, 
I've got two squared raised to the power of negative three. Oh no, I have a negative exponent. Follow your rules, right? I can take that negative three and I can multiply it by two. And what do I get? Two to the power of negative six. Well, what is that? Our negative exponent property tells me that two to the power of negative six is actually one over two to the power of positive six. What is two to the power of six? It's 64. So that's one over 64. Let's move on. The next property is the quotient of powers property, quotient rule, quotient property. But what this states is that when you divide two powers with the same base, so there's my A, there's my A, right? So that signifies same base. What can I do? I can subtract the exponents. So in this example, we're actually given multiple variables. So you, you, you just kind of look at each variable one at a time. So let's look at the X's first. I've got X to the fourth on top, X squared on bottom. Well, that's gonna be X squared, right? Four minus two is two. If I look at the Y's, Y, five minus seven is what? Negative two, right? One on top minus one on bottom, Y to the negative second power. How can I rewrite this? Y to the negative second power is actually one over Y squared. So this is how I'd rewrite that, X squared over Y squared. And if you look at your initial problem, like I, I tell a lot of my students that struggle with stuff like this, where do I have more X's, on top or on bottom? On top, how many more? Two more, check. Where do I have more Y's, on top or on bottom? On bottom, how many more? Two. There you go. All right, so the next property, we've only got two more, the power of a product property. So what this states is to raise a product to a power, you find the power of each factor. So in this example, you're still looking at this exponent that's right outside the parentheses, but on the inside, you've got like lots of variables or numbers multiplied together. Right, so we'll call each of those a factor, right? Because factors multiplied together give me a product. So A is a factor, B is a factor. What you have to do is every single factor or every single number and variable gets raised to the power of M. So it's like I'm distributing that M, but you gotta use your, make sure you're using your power rule. So in this example, I've got an exponent right outside my parentheses. I'm going to raise three to the power of three x to the fourth to the power of three, and y to the power of three. So let's first raise three to the power of three. Three cubed is 27. I usually have students write this off to the side because a lot of students, you're gonna be multiplying your exponents and then all of a sudden they'll write nine. But you're raising everything to the power of three. So three cubed is 27. Now I can use that power rule that states that I multiply my exponents right? So x to the power of 4 raised to the power of 3 is actually x to the power of 12. Then y, if you don't have an exponent there, it's assumed 1, so don't forget to raise that to the power of 3 as well. And let's look at the very last rule, the power of a quotient property. It's similar to the one we just did, okay, with the power of a product property, but um, to raise a quotient to a power, you found that find the power of each factor. So just like right here, if I have different bases, same exponent, that's basically what I have right here. That's the same thing as dividing both the, va the bases and raising it to that exponent. So you can do this a few different ways. Um, in the first example over here, this 6x cubed over y to the fourth, all raised to the power of two, I have an exponent right outside uh, my parentheses, which means every single factor gets raised to the power of two. Six gets raised to the power of two. What is six squared? It's 36. Then what can I do when I, I'm gonna use that power property or power rule um, and I'm going to multi or x cubed raised to the power of two is x to the power of three times two, which is x to the power of six. Divided by, now let's look at the denominator. y to the fourth raised to the power of two is y to the eighth, right? I multiply. So every single factor inside your parentheses 
gets raised to the power of two. And in the next example, one of the things that you can do first is you can simplify what's inside the parentheses, okay? And that's really what I like to do first. So we'll use our quotient property, our quotient rule. And I can first simplify the numeric portion. Three over six is just one over two. And then a to the fourth on top, a on bottom, leaves me with a cubed on top. B over B to the fifth, I'm going to have B to the fourth. Am I going to have it on top or on bottom? On bottom, B to the fourth. So I've got all of that raised to the power of negative three. That's my first step. I simplified what is inside, I'm sorry, inside the parentheses. So now let's look at our second step. Notice that that exponent is a that's outside the parentheses is negative. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the fraction inside the parentheses. I'm gonna put two b to the fourth over one a cubed, which is just a cubed, and then I'm gonna raise it to the positive exponent. Okay, that's a really good step in there that helps students go, okay, this is kind of easier for me to think about. I have a positive exponent, so I flipped it. So now let's look at our very last step. Now we're kind of back to where we were in the previous example, where every sing single number and variable gets raised to the power of three. So two's gonna get raised to the power of three. What is that? Eight. B to the fourth gets raised to the power of three. What is that? 12, B to the 12th. A cubed gets raised to the power of three. What is that? A to the ninth. And that concludes your notes. I tried to do it as quickly as possible over your properties of exponents review for algebra two. I hope it was helpful.